Hello and welcome College Insiders, I'm your host Anastasia Bernard. We step one week closer to the end of the semester, so let's make these final weeks count. Our reporter Daniel Collamore will share with us the effects that the ash fall from the last Sufria volcano can have on our respiratory systems, our skins and our eyes. We will also hear from an asthmatic on how the current conditions of Barbados has personally affected them. But before we get there, our reporter John T. Coffin has this week's recap. Thank you Anna. In this week's recap, Barbados can now predict the effect of ash fall on the island within approximately 90 minutes. This announcement was made by the Minister of Home Affairs, Information and Public Affairs, Wilfred Abrams, during a last Fair emergency update press conference on Monday. Abrams explained that the 90-minute alert would give Barbados time to plan, but it would not be enough. During a press conference on April 11th, Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley announced the start of a national cleanup. The cleanup is to ensure that public and private spaces are cleared and the ash is disposed of properly. Minister of Home Affairs, Information and Public Affairs, Wilfred Abrams, stated that the process will be ongoing. West Indies captain Craig Barfoot said in an interview with Barbados Cricket Association that he wanted his reign as captain to be based on disciplined and positive cricket. His first series as test captain was the recently concluded one against Sri Lanka in the Caribbean, which ended in a love all draw. Landmark of the highest order for Craig Brathwaite. Test century number nine, he becomes the 18th West Indies Test captain to score one. Thank you, Jonte. With ash far from the last Sufria volcano affecting the island, exactly how harmful can this substance be for us? Our reporter Daniel Collamore goes behind the headline on this story. Thank you, Anastasia. With the amount of ash that's circulating in the air, the long-term negative effects of this is the development of silicosis, which can lead to a higher chance of developing lung cancer. In this edition of Behind the Headlines, I spoke to Danielle Wilson, an asthmatic for majority of her life, to see how this has been affecting her. As an asthmatic, I am concerned. And not just that, but I also suffer with sinusitis as well. So when I deal with a small amount of dust, let's say if I'm cleaning my room, it has my sinuses going on end for like the rest of the day. So the dust is definitely, definitely going to affect that. And too, because of the fact that I'm asthmatic is going to give me a lot, a harder time breathing properly as well. Volcanic ash can be one of the most harmful things that come from a volcano erupting. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines is exactly 190 kilometers away from Barbados, so that just shows how far it can travel. I spoke with Dr. Chloe Thompson as she shared with us the negative effect the ash can have on us and how we can best protect ourselves. Well, volcanic ash is a combination of broken down glass particles as well as rock and minerals. These can have adverse respiratory effects on asthmatics, which can lead to bronchoconstriction, which is just basically tightening of the airways, um, which can lead to chest tightness as well as wheezing um, and a full blown asthma attack. This can lead um, to the patient needing to present to hospital and maybe needing um, full nebulizations. As volcanic ash is so abrasive, it can cause serious irritation. In terms of your eyes, it can actually scrape and cause damage to your eyes, um, which can lead to a conjunctivitis type look, which is when it is very red, it can damage your eyeball. In terms of the nose, it can um, irritate your nares, so the actual passageway, um, and which will incre there will be a response of increased mucus production to try to clear it, so you might get a runny nose um, and that response. In terms of your skin, you could actually break out in a rash um, and then as a result of actually scratching, you can get marks and scars being formed. So Dr. Thompson, 
If someone was severely exposed to the volcanic ash, what should be their next course of action? It really depends on the proximity of the ash. If it is that, you know, if you're someone like in St. Vincent and you're much closer to the ash in terms of the heat and the maltiness, that's a different story. They would need to present to the accident and emergency department. If it's someone that's in Barbados, that it's just the um, volcanic ash plume that we're being affected by um, simple things like irrigating your eyes with water so just running your eyes under cold water trying to flush them out um, using cold water as well on your skin trying to avoid scratching your skin um, things like that if it is that you have respiratory issues like um, bronchitis emphysema asthma making sure you use your medication um, in in expectantly waiting to you know have the symptoms don't wait until you actually start feeling ill to then take the medication um, act be beforehand prevention is always better than cure but if it is that you have any reaction to exposure to ash please go to your medical practitioner or to the accident and emergency department well that's it for this edition of behind the headlines back to you anastasia Thank you, Daniel. Now, we've heard what's been happening behind the headlines, so let's check in with our reporter Gabrielle Pilgrim to find out what has been trending this week. Thank you, Anastasia. Ash, ash, and more ash. I guess you can tell what has been trending this week. Many Barbadians took to social media to voice their concerns and grievances about the La Soufriere volcanic eruption. After the long-awaited curfew extension and the lift on the curfew on Mondays to Wednesdays, Barbadians were looking forward to a taste of more freedom. However, the ash has locked locals inside once more and they are feeling the cabin fever again. Season 2 of the Stand Home Party will begin on Saturday, April 17th. The virtual party started as a way to keep Barbadians entertained during the national pause that occurred in February and March of this year. It quickly became a highly anticipated virtual event that many locals could join and become a part of the party. Back to you, Anastasia. Thank you, Gabrielle. Well, that's all for today, College Insiders. But remember to stay safe and wear your mask, and we'll see you right back here next week.